function, right? Hey, we were just talking to uh, DeMond, and um, I was asking him about the early signing period and um, a lot of recruits making the decisions this week and how he chose to stay in his hometown and asked him to kind of talk about that. And he said uh, kind of whenever he's talking to people who aren't from here, like, and he brought you up, and he said, like, you know, from a place that he'd never been, like, and there, there's kind of a bond feeling together in this place, like being away from home. I'm, what, what is your relationship with the Damone like that? How how did that work for you? Not you know coming down from North Dakota State, but also being from Missouri. Right. Yeah. Damone. He's one of the first guys that I talked to uh, right when I committed here. So off the bat, we were already texting and communicating. And then once I got here, uh, I seen what he liked and he seen what I like, and we just had a bond straight out there. But coming from like Missouri and up North Dakota. Um, I like to experience new places and new people and get to know people. So that's just something coming down to uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and uh, seeing all the different type of people here and the new cultures. Uh, it was something that, that I enjoyed as a person. And I mean, I mean, with others in the locker room as well. And I mean, do you what? What is it about like the, you know the people who come here from other places? Do you talk to others about what it's like here? And you know, some stay, some may not. You know, things like that. Where do you, you you talk about how it is? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, we all have our different uh, backgrounds and just people coming from all different parts of the country and just coming here to achieve a common goal. Uh, I've talked to guys from my area around here, uh, the backup quarterback. He's from uh, the Kansas City area. <clears throat> and also uh, guys from like Florida and different places uh, like that. Uh, we just all just love to just talk about where we're from and how it affects us each individually. Well, obviously part of why you, you know, came to LSU, you could, you could have gone out of the draft last year, but you stayed to, you know, develop so you could do it and things like that. I guess now that you've basically been through a full season, I guess what has your takeaway been on this whole year? I think this year has been an experience, uh, one that's been good for me. Um, coming from a winning program and then having the adversity that we had early on in the season and then uh, <clears throat> coming back this next weekend and uh, being the number six team, uh, it showed great adversity and something that I needed to go through and something that we all needed to go through because uh, LSU, we won the national championship last year. So um, this season is something that I wouldn't trade uh, for the world. Um, everything happens for a reason, and I think this is something that I really needed. Hey, Jabril, you know, it seemed like really every you know, third or fourth play, you were getting that Kyle Trask somewhere or another. I mean, can you just talk a little bit about the game plan for you specifically last week and just kind of how you can mirror that this week against Ole Miss because you guys are probably going to need to put a lot of pressure on Coral, their quarterback. Right. Uh, the game plan for last week was to affect the quarterback in any way that we could, either uh, bring the blitz, um, showing different coverages, because um, he was a Heisman front runner at that point. So. We knew going in that uh, a lot of people didn't expect spe didn't expect us to come in and win, so we knew they were going to take us lightly. So we had to come out and uh, just come together as a team and bond and uh, just try to hit them in the mouth and show them that we're LSU and we're for real. So uh, we just wanted to affect him every way possible. It was the same thing that we have to do this week against Ole Miss. Uh, they have a couple good quarterbacks that they use, so. Uh, just trying to mix up the pressures on them is something we'll do. Hey, Jabril, I was going to ask you about that. Just This is the third week in a row. I think you guys are really going up against an explosive uh, offense, and I was just going to ask you the challenges the Rebels will, will present to you guys uh, as a defense this weekend. Right. They have a lot of athletes. Um, they like to spread it out and spread you out and uh, try to run zone and also stretch play, plays on the perimeter and also RPOs. So this week we're just going to have to uh, be careful with our eyes and continue to hone in our technique and skills that we've uh, built on from last week against Florida. Jabril, you talked about the adversity last week. We were talking about how whether if the season was 8-0, how things would be a lot different. 
I mean, with all the alt apps and transfers, how much does the win change how people feel? Yeah, the, uh, the win, it gave hope to a lot of people. It, it shows them that the future is bright here at LSU and that what Coach Joe was saying about building a championship program is true. And it just shows you the heart that everybody that is still on the team has and how we all just all just came together and just wanted to show everybody in the world because we're playing on ESPN that we could fight and regardless of the opt-outs and the situations that we were in, uh, we were still one, one team, one heartbeat. Hey, Jabril, uh, I think that a lot of people felt like, you know, national people, that, that, that might have been your coming out party and you were, you know, you're making stops in the backfield for losses, you're downfield covering. Uh, obviously, your versatility has been on display this entire season. Did you feel like that was maybe your best performance and maybe uh, you made yourself a little extra money possible? Yes, I thought it was one of my uh, better performances this year. Uh, I know I had a down game uh, the week before against Alabama, and then I just wanted to capitalize on playing Florida. But this past game was a whole collective team effort uh, from special teams all the way to offense and defense, and we couldn't have got the win without any of us uh, all coming together. Um, I mean, have you, have you kind of decided whether, you know, Ogeron's talked about re-recruiting guys. Do you feel like you earn more money by coming back for another year? Yeah, that's something that uh, I'll talk to my parents and we'll sit down and just think about it as the week goes on and after our last game. Uh, Jabril, I, I, I know it's, it's still a few days later here, but everyone's talking about this shoe toss. Um, just your perspective mm -hmm. of it. How many people have joked with you about this? And just you were part of this game that this guy tossed this shoe. <laughs> yeah, that's something uh, is very unfortunate for them, but fortunate for us. But it's something that uh, when it happened, you were happy and to to be able to give the offense another chance. But as you sit back on it and you see from the player's perspective over there in Florida, you see how a lot of people on social media are like hitting him up and like going after him. Uh, you kind of feel bad for him because it was an in the moment type of play and everything. So um, those mistakes like that is something that a lot of people just have to learn from. And being in his situation as an athlete, I could feel bad for him and seeing how, yeah, that's in fact affecting him as a person. You mentioned, you know, team victory, uh, you know, the offense gets a break, goes out and gets a field goal. But can you think about the, 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 the job the defense did in the fourth quarter? Y'all had three consecutive three and outs. You know, y'all really, as many yards as y'all gave up, y'all found it together at a time that y'all really needed to get the ball back to the offense and y'all did it. Right. Uh, those stops right there were key and crucial within the game because if we didn't get that, then uh, Kyle Trask and the Florida offense, they were going to, game momentum and continue to roll down the field. So just the D-line getting pressure and then the back seven being able to cover for the amount of time uh, really helped in creating those three and outs. Jabril, it seemed like a lot of young guys made an impact on Saturday. What do you see in the young players on this team? I see a lot of grit, uh, a lot of, like I said earlier, heart from a lot of them. Uh, I think I read uh, 26 either freshmen or sophomores played. So that's just something that early on in the season when they were playing, they weren't able to get the reps. But as you see later on in the season, you see them become uh, the players that their potential uh, was shown. And just seeing those young guys step up uh, is something that uh, really brings brightness to the future for LSU. I think whenever people look at the defense and things like this, I mean, you, you come away with a win, but there's also, you know, 600 yards of total offense. I mean, when you look at Saturday's game and look at as it as a whole, what what are some of the things that you feel are still to improve with this defense? Yeah, to still to improve is just a little misassignments. Uh, either uh, one of us not filling the hole correctly or not communicating in the back end, one side playing one coverage, the other side playing that. But other than that, uh, as a defense, we've really grown together and continue to get better each week. 
Thank you, Jabril. Thank you.